Hello, what lurks beneath? I have some interesting stories for you. I've been trying to do some digging on the whole dogman phenomenon, and I actually found an account of one that dates all the way back to 1887, and it has to deal with a small crew of lumberjacks back in Northern California. From what I've gathered with the information, this group of lumberjacks were scouting a new logging area, and apparently, all six of them report seeing tall beasts emerge from the trees, running across the pathways and disappearing. They reported these as extremely large canines, walking upright, black in color, and having very pointed ears. This scared all of them very much. However, their foreman decided to press onward, and they would continue to see these creatures again and again in the same area. But they would always run away before they can do much. They referred to these creatures by several different names, one being Timber Beasts, the other known as the Lumberjack Devil. Eventually, they began seeing these creatures more and more frequently as they began expanding in this area. The foreman did not believe them and continued onward. And at some point, I think about three months into the whole process, two of the six lumberjacks went missing. Nobody could find any trace of them, and the other four lumberjacks abandoned the expansion altogether. The foreman was unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, not able to hire on more lumberjacks willing to do the job, but the reports were terrifying. He'd went out there himself to survey things, to try and find these missing lumberjacks, when he too finally reported seeing the same strange creatures that his crew had seen. Some information that I really wanted to fill you in on is that that foreman was my great-grandfather, and I actually have written documentation of his three-page terrifying encounts with these things. And apparently, judging from his writing, they almost killed him. And he believes he stumbled upon some of their territory, and they acted very, very hostile towards him. The geographic area was very dense timber, lots of wilderness, untouched by man, and this is more word of mouth than anything else, but I guess some of the natives wouldn't even go out here they were too afraid of these creatures. Now, I don't know about you, but I find the accounts to be incredibly interesting. My grandmother actually holds possession of these journals, and while I read it a while ago, maybe I can pull them out and actually write you the stories written by him. I want to be careful, though. I've heard all sorts of other stories about people having their photos and video evidence confiscated, or worse, being interrogated. So... I want to try and keep this on the down low as much as possible. You'll be hearing from me again soon. The Buckeye Creek Wilderness is located about 30 miles outside of Phoenix, Arizona, and just south of Route 85. According to one local man who frequents the area, is known as Death Valley, and he claims there are far more coyotes and mountain lions in this wilderness. In fact, he says or claims it's infested with werewolves, but he clarifies, it's not like a movie werewolf. These are real-life dog creatures. So what did he see exactly? It appeared to look like a person running on all fours across the road. He went on to say that when he saw the creature, it quickly disappeared into some brush, then reappeared much closer to his truck, claims this thing was mocking him, the man shared that he had seen this creature three times now and has gone back to the area where he first spotted it. He didn't see it again, but a lot of his friends and him saw a lot of other weirdness, including strange lights in the sky. He goes on to share that the last time he went out there, he also found human-like tracks, but they were really large and more canine-looking. His most frightening encounter is detailed. I had somebody with me, which is why we were going back. We're not going to drive all the way out there for nothing. When asked if they got photos or video footage of what he says, he says, Yes and no. We did get some pictures of stuff we saw, but when it comes to this werewolf-looking thing, no. 
when asked if somebody could have been playing tricks on him or setting up a Halloween prank by dressing up as a creature, he claims that it was definitely real. When I was a kid, I had to walk up a hill every day to get home from school. Now, there is a back road, or kind of a trail that leads through the woods, and there used to be this old abandoned house. It had been long abandoned by many, many years. We're surprised that due to the weathering, it hadn't fully collapsed. Well, one day, while walking home, as my friends and I were coming down the hill, we saw something big moving around this old house. It kind of appeared to be a large person, but it had the ears of a dog on top of its head, and it was like it was crouched down, looking at us from behind some trees. I pointed out to it as we were seeing this thing, and began running back up the hill towards my house, with my friends following right behind me. As soon as we get into our houses, we ran inside our homes. We were terrified. We decided that after this day, we would never go down that road again. But years later, my friends and I decided to go back down the road where we saw what we all thought was, do I dare say it, a werewolf. The old house was still there. In fact, it looked in worse condition. Graffiti, a little bit more broken down. Clearly, at some point or another, there had been homeless activity around here, hence the garbage and graffiti. It had completely overgrown, worse than before. It was getting dark, and our curiosity and faux bravery got the best of us. So, we decided to go inside this house, just looking through it out of curiosity. We kept spooking each other, telling us the werewolf lived inside here. Of course, we got in there and everything was dusty, abandoned, and broken. We kind of searched for the first floor, just looking around, and we heard something big moving around upstairs. We froze for a brief second, and it sounded like something was slowly making its way down the stairs. That's when we decided to run out through the window of the house, back, right where we came. We did not want to know what this could have been. This was easily probably one of the most terrifying times when me and my friends saw something unusual during our childhood years. Sure, I have no way to prove that this was indeed the same creature, or perhaps a werewolf of some kind, but it sounded unusually heavy, and like it, he or she, whoever it was, was trying to be extra quiet and sneaking down. But the house was so old, everything kind of creaked and groaned. Now, I will say that the creature my friends and I saw years ago was indeed something that we had never seen before. Something very out of place. It was a cold October morning. The year was 1977 when I first saw it. I was about six or seven years old at the time, and my big sister, who I'll call Stacy, had just started high school. We lived in a house on the outskirts of Klamath Falls in Oregon, near a very heavily forested area we referred to as the Back 40. The Back 40 was pretty empty, but it was also next to a large farmhouse and a well-maintained gravel road. Now, we called the Back 40 the Back 40 because it was untamed wilderness and timber, stretching roughly 40 to 50 acres, if not more. Now, my mother owned two dogs at the time, both smallish mutts, one named Jellybean and another, Sally Mae. That morning, I woke up before anybody else, went out to get some cereal for breakfast, and I noticed something large moving through the backyard. It was blueberry season here in Oregon, and the bushes were swaying back and forth. So, naturally, I think I just assumed it was a large animal some sort of stag, perhaps. But then, something forward came out. It was a large canine. At first, I think I thought it was a neighbor's dog, but it got close enough for me to see its face, and I stopped dead in my tracks as I'm getting the cereal and felt this sinking feeling in my stomach. 
I, for some reason, don't remember why, but I was drawn to the back door and even stepped outside. I felt like I was in a trance-like state and I couldn't control my own thoughts or movement. It's like something was drawing me closer to this thing. It had a snout that was more elongated like a deer, with sharp teeth jutting out of its mouth behind its lips, kind of like fangs but all over. Its eyes were very deep, very set in. The fur was black as night, and its eyes were a stark, shining yellow. It was menacing and unnatural. The creature continued in my direction. As it came closer, I can make out what looked to be a human form with animalistic features. It stood upright like a man, but its features resembled that of a wolf. It had brownish gray fur all over its body and the face of a wolf. The creature looked much bigger than any other normal wolf should have been. And then it got down to all four, with its head roughly about three or so feet off the ground, and then standing back upright on two, like it wasn't sure whether it wanted to stand on two legs or be down on all four. As it approached closer and closer, I somehow regained feeling over my body. That's the only way I can describe it, running inside and telling my mom. She didn't believe me at first, but she could see I was visibly distressed, so she went outside to comfort me and she could see this thing off in the distance, standing on two legs, just as it was before. This thing looked over in the direction of her house, and then turned and walked away towards the back 40. My mother would later call Animal Control, who arrived several hours later. I guess they searched almost every inch of that forest, but never found anything too out of the ordinary except exceptionally large wolf prints, which, I guess, for Oregon, were some of the largest wolf prints found. Even my sister Stacy said that her bus driver had reported seeing strange, unusually large dogs around the area. I asked my mom if it was possible that we were somehow, I don't know, living close to a portal of some kind. She quickly claimed that portals do not exist, and that at the time... I was probably just having a dream, since I should have been asleep normally, and I woke up early. This story is true, at least as much as my memory serves, and happened in Klamath Falls, Oregon. The reason I am sharing this with you is because there have been several dogman sightings reported recently in Northern California. It's got a very similar landscape to Southern Oregon particularly high desert regions infested with thick forests and canyons. Even today, as an adult, I'm still not really sure what to make of this memory. I was on a trip to the Oregon coast when I had what might have been the scariest experience I've ever had. It was late at night, and we were driving back from Astoria. We were in a parking lot near the beach, getting ready to stop for coffee before heading home. And suddenly, this huge wolf creature coming out of nowhere, he started howling and running loudly toward our car. My son, who caught it, screamed, Dad, and got scared and pointed out the window where this thing had come from. The next thing I know, it's charging directly at our vehicle with its arms out. I don't know what it was, but I'm sure my doors were locked. Every time we would fly to a new location on the coast that night and stop somewhere, I would always be nervous looking over my shoulder. It's like I could still see it running from afar, running in my rearview mirror, even though I probably didn't. It was fast and incredibly strong. Whenever I sped away from this thing, it would keep up with us, finally disappearing. It gave me chills every time it came towards the window. Like, we were slowing down, but we weren't at all. At that point, I even let off the gas pedal. My wife, who was very confused and scared, she wasn't really sure what to make of it, other than just scream her head off that this large wolf animal was chasing after our vehicle. Once we were back at our hotel, since we couldn't make it home that night, we didn't deem it safe. My son and I could not stop talking about it. 
We told other people about what had happened. Of course, they didn't believe us. This creature was some huge, growling, werewolf-looking thing. It had a long snout, really large teeth, and it had this horrible screech as it got close to the driver's side door. I was in panic mode trying to get away from this thing. In fact, the whole ordeal is kind of a blur to me. I don't know what it was, but it was after us that night. And so far, I've told my story to many people who don't have a lot of interest. But this is the most accurate description of what happened. This thing definitely ran on two legs like a person. But it had features like a dog. It appeared it could jump over and get over cars across from ours where we parked. Its eyes were a bright yellow too. Kind of like a wolf hybrid or something. I don't know. Maybe all these stories are connected. Whatever it is. He scared me pretty badly. And I still worry about driving on roads at night. I was really scared and wanted to get out of there overall. I honestly think this thing was just toying with us. Because it clearly could have killed us if it wanted to. I'm sorry I'm not the best writer in the world. I just thought I wanted to quickly get my thoughts jotted down. So... Hopefully you can kind of read between the lines of my mess of writing and get the story out of it. Anyway, it's always scary thinking about how close we came to dying that night. I have always been the type of person to never really be scared of anything. But on July 18th, 2018, that all changed. I always thought people who claimed they saw things like this were just making it up. But, after what happened with me, I have a completely different perspective now. Around 7pm, I was walking home from my job as a manager of a small convenience store here in town. It was a pretty cloudy day, and it was rather dark outside around the time I began walking. When I got about halfway home, which would be about a 10-15 to 15 minute walk from where my store is located in town to my house, out on the countryside. Just as I began passing by a huge field that has been vacant for as long as I can remember, this huge monster-looking dog ran out of the woods on the other side of the field. This thing came out at full speed and began chasing me. All I could see was its eyes, teeth and paws running after me, like some sort of werewolf or something, but it looked more like a wolf than anything else. I ran and screamed as it was running after me. Eventually, it stopped chasing me. After I got home, my mother told me that she could hear the screams from inside the house. It sounded like some type of weird animal scream or high-pitched noise. Another note about the story is just a few months earlier in April, I saw something very strange in my yard one morning. There were these huge footprints all over my lawn, and there were uprooted grass everywhere, in two separate areas, about 20 feet apart from one another. The size of the prints were so large, they didn't even fit where my hand would be. I had placed my hand down on the ground, and these wolf prints, I assume, were much larger than I could ever imagine. I'm still pretty unnerved by all of that, as you could expect it to be. It's been almost three years now since this all happened, and I'm still shaken up by what it was and what it could have been. If you had asked me a while ago, I would have told you that nothing like this would ever scare me. But just thinking back on this nightmare, it gives me chills. One night, just outside of Portland, Oregon, pre-pandemic life. I was taking a walk with my girlfriend. As we walked down the sidewalk, I stopped when I heard what sounded like bushes rustling. I thought we were maybe going to get jumped, but from the corner of my eye, I saw something moving in the distance, something dark. Quick note, I'd like to start by saying that this is a true story about my encounter. I've been very hesitant to share it with others, for fear that they'll think I'm crazy. But I've always wanted more people to know what happened that night. As soon as I stopped walking, 
the mysterious figure froze and stared at me. It was still too dark for any detail to be visible, but whatever it seemed animalistic, and for some reason, my girlfriend insisted we keep walking, even though she saw something too. In all honesty, I can't say if it would have chased us or not, because after seeing how scared she was, and knowing her disposition towards dogs, I told her we should go back. I'd also like to note that the whole time I was facing this creature, it did not make any noise other than the rustle of bushes and a light breeze. Its eyes were extremely bright and followed us as we walked away. I'm not sure what it was or what it wanted, but I can say that I saw something dark and canine-like. I have no doubt in my mind that something odd is going on in these more remote areas. Did I mention how bright its eyes were? The rest of it was still too dark to make out, other than a general silhouette, and that it appeared to look like a large, dog-sized figure. A few days later, out of curiosity and more than anything else, my girlfriend and I took a drive back to where we had seen the creature. We went very early in the morning, so there would be nothing around us. In hindsight, this doesn't make much sense, if there was some demon dogman thing out there, walking around that early in the morning probably would not have scared it. In any case, we saw nothing but trees and brush when we arrived to our destination. After about 20 minutes of driving around aimlessly, I had a feeling of something watching us. My girlfriend started freaking out, saying she felt like somebody was behind her as well, which only made things worse. So, I started speeding up, until we were almost back to my house. Once we got back home and walking inside, my girlfriend said she swore somebody followed us back. To this day, she swears it was true. I'd also like to note that both of our phones were acting very strange while we were out in this area. That includes the night of the walk, and the morning when we drove back. We would get this weird cell phone staticky reception coming out of our phones. It was very strange. But that night, I did some research on dogmen and creatures similar to what I saw. There have been a lot of sightings throughout Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin to name a few. With many reports describing this odd black figure just outside windows at nighttime, some people believe these are dogmen encounters, while others are convinced that these are completely different hybrid entities. The descriptions range from an upright animal walking on all fours to something far more human-like, but still carry a wolfish appearance. I've never been a believer in things like this, but something strange was out there that night. I don't know what it was, but if you are going to go out into the forest at night, be careful and bring a light and a weapon. In hindsight, we should have just stayed inside and perhaps watched a movie. But when it comes to the unknown, the curiosity really does get the better of us sometimes. I've been wanting to write to you and tell you about the most terrifying thing that I've ever experienced in my life. I have no explanation for what I saw, and I'm not normally a believer in those types of things. I read your stories, and I really hope that you can help me. I'll call myself Mike, and if there's ever a time to be proud of being from a small town, this would be it. About 10 years ago now, I was about 20, 21, working for my father in our logging business. We had a lot of work that summer, so we were plenty busy. And this particular night will always stand out in my mind as one of the most confusing, bizarre, and scariest nights I've experienced in my life. I was home sleeping soundly when I get a call about one in the morning asking me to come into work early. We had an extra odd amount of trucks coming in on the next shift. They needed somebody there to make sure they got hauled out properly. I woke up telling my wife I'd be home late and not to wait up. I hopped to my truck and cleared out. It was roughly a one-hour drive from my house to work, 
so it took me a little bit of time to get there. Plenty of coffee helped to drive. Once I arrived, pulling around back, everything was going, everybody was moving stuff around, getting ready. I walked in, and their attention turned towards me immediately when they saw that it was just me. Everybody had been busy, but they all had this look on their faces like something wasn't quite right. Something was unusual. They looked back down at what they were doing again, and I was asked to help park the trucks as they came in. It felt like something weird was going on. I don't know. You could just sense it in the air. I don't know why, but it just had this strange vibe over here in the office that night. You could feel it everywhere around you, which isn't normal. Especially for a logging company, where everybody knows each other well by now. And there are no secrets or anything weird going on. I don't know what it was, but after seeing how serious everybody looked, I knew it must have been pretty important to get people looking like that at work in the middle of the night. After being told to park some trucks, I went outside and did some of my job. Now, it was roughly 3 a.m. at this point, and I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, when suddenly, this horrible scream shouts off in the distance, and let me just say, it didn't sound like any animal I've ever heard. I can't even begin to explain how strange it sounded. It was very high in pitch and very loud, like a woman screaming but with more force and pitch behind it. I radioed over to my supervisor, who, by the way, is a man that I didn't care for, a man that my father had hired to run the area around here. Anyway, I told him, Hey, did you hear that? I think somebody is in trouble. But he ignored my response. I got nothing from him. I even tried asking some of my fellow co-workers about it, but they refused to acknowledge it. At this point, something was definitely up. I finished my duty and headed back to the office. Several of us were scared and demanded to know what was going on. I had to sit and wait, but afterwards, my supervisor pulled me aside and explained it to me. Several of the workers on the site in the past couple weeks have all described seeing large humanoid figures just off in the darkness. I laughed and asked if this was some sort of joke. My boss looked extremely concerned, went on to see that strange screams and noises were also present. And much of the reason I was called into work this early was because of the extra work, because many of the workers are now refusing to show up due to this ongoing phenomenon. Something was going on, and at first, my boss or supervisor refused to acknowledge it due to not wanting to cycle more fear on the employees. I told them maybe we should just call the police or animal control or something, and then it could be dealt with. He shook his head, explained that the matter is much more complicated than that. I didn't understand what he was talking about. It's like the man was speaking to me in riddles, or if I had a question, he would respond to me with a rhetorical question. Now, it wasn't until about 4.30 that morning that I saw one of these creatures myself. It was watching me, scanning a small woodpile just beyond the reach of light. But the light was faint enough that I could make out what it was. I hate to say it, and it sounds so far-fetched. It even makes my story sound null. This thing looked like a living werewolf in the flesh. It actually reminded me of the movie Dog Soldiers. That's what it looked like. It was tall, and its eyes had this glow to them. I yelled out at it, thinking it was maybe some lunatic playing Halloween. But just before I can get a word out of my mouth, it disappeared. That was enough for me, and I quickly told my supervisor I'm done and I'm going back home. That was fun to explain to the wife, and then later on that day... I had to tell the old man I was quitting the job. Now I work in a completely different field and I've not seen or dealt with any of these things since, but it easily stands out as one of the scariest things I've ever dealt with, and to this day, I don't know what it was that I saw. I don't want to know, I don't care. I would really prefer this memory to just be forgotten, so my hope is that by writing it out, I can kind of get it out of me.
back when I was about 14 or 15, I used to live in a town which lies on the outskirts of Vancouver Island. Ladysmith, specifically, is known for its mining history and being the home of the first ever Trans-Pacific Telegraph Cable that connected North America to Asia, as well as being heralded for its historical significance. It's also known for one other thing. All right, so here's what happened. I was out camping in my backyard with some friends, which is basically thick forest, sparsely populated by houses. And during the day, we would just play games or hang out. But at night, we usually hung around a fire till like two in the morning. Then everybody would go home. This particular night was no different. My friends left, but I stayed by the fire for a bit and decided I was tired enough to go into bed. Once I laid in bed and turned out the lights, that's when it happened. Since I lay with my back facing the window and I am laying facing the wall, there was outside light being cast into my window from outside, and I could see this large shadow, this shape approaching my window, which I thought was a person. It approached very fast, and it scared me. I thought somebody was straight up running up to my window. As I turned and reacted to the movement, I just see this giant dog face pressed up against my window immediately. I nearly passed out from fear. This animal shoved its face so hard up against the window, snot was pouring out. It was the ugliest, scariest looking dog face I've ever seen, and it was looking right down at me. It had this sickly looking snarl. I was terrified. I couldn't even muster a scream. It seemed to know that it really wanted me to at least make some noise, but I was far too afraid. It just started snarling, grimacing, and growling at me through the window for what felt like an hour, staring into my eyes with that ugly face. And then it raised its hands and put them up on the glass. And I mean hands. This thing's hands kind of reminded me of a raccoon's hands. Dark, but individual fingers with claws on them. It would scrape against the glass, trying to push. And if you followed its eyes, it's like it was looking for a weak point a way to somehow open the window. Then, it would dig its claws into the edges of the window to try and pull the window up. But you could tell it just quite couldn't get it, and it was getting frustrated. Of course, I was terrified. I couldn't get up out of bed. I sat there, completely pale and convinced this was the end. And in such a short amount of time, this creature became aggressive like it was trying to break its way into my window, and just then, shortly disappeared into the night, with everything staying silent. And there weren't even crickets. The moment it left is when I woke up my parents, and my parents quickly dismissed any notion that this thing was remotely true. They just thought it was vivid night terrors. They suggested some crap like, I drink warm milk before bed, or something. I don't even remember. They didn't even look to see the damage that was done to my outside window. They were too concerned with trying to get me back into my room to get some sleep. I never really told anybody about this, until now. I have only recently moved out of that house, but the moment my parents drove off and we looked outside our window, there were claw marks on the edge of it, or it had tried pulling itself up in. There's no way a dog could have made those marks, unless it was as big as a bear which is clearly impossible considering the size of dogs. This thing wasn't even regular at all. It was demonic in every sense of the way, and terrified me to the core. I don't feel like I'm the same way after that sighting. I truly believe that this was some sort of demon thing trying to get into my house. God only knows what it would have done. And part of me wonders why it never tried to go back after the back door or through my other window. And also, where did it come from that it would chase right up to my window? Why was I targeted? Why not when I was out there with my friends around the campfire? Had this thing been watching me, waiting for the right moment? So many questions that I still have to this day.
The story I'm about to tell you happened in the 90s, right around 1994. My husband worked in a warehouse that delivered furniture to stores. And I, well, I worked on cleaning houses. We made okay money from our jobs, but we always lived a bit of a limited life. At least we were able to keep a roof over our heads and food in the fridge. Definitely not rich by any stretch. The family that owned the warehouse my husband worked for was pretty wealthy. And what was really nice was that they had this house up in Big Bear. I cleaned it for them whenever they came back from family outings up there. Whenever that happened, we would have a family outing of our own. They would go there at least four times a year. So that meant we would go four times too. We would always plan it so that we would leave on Thursday and come back on Monday morning. The family knew we did this. It was actually their idea. We'd spend most of our time there relaxing, living it up like we could not do at home. Our daughter was young in those days, so I loved the idea of taking her out into nature, the fresh air, the trees, taking her on walks. It was nice. We enjoyed ourselves until the last day before we would leave. On that day, I'd start cleaning. One summer, I had to go clean up the house after a 4th of July party that the family had hosted. My daughter was about 4 or 5. We left at noon and got there around 7. The house was 3 stories tall. The living room and kitchen were on the second floor. The bedrooms in the first and third floors my daughter's favorite was the first, because it had a room with a trunk full of toys and games. The house was pretty secluded, with an open backyard that if you would walk far enough, you would eventually reach a lake. You could even see it from the third floor balcony. Anyway, one night, my husband went to bed early, but my daughter could not sleep, so I let her play downstairs with some of the toys. I was upstairs in the living room, watching TV. She comes running into the room, crying. I asked her what was wrong, if she was hurt. But she was scared. She said she saw something just outside the window, that a big dog growled at her. I told her not to worry, and that she probably just saw some stray animal. I asked her to show me, but she did not want to. I was surprised, to be honest. My daughter loves animals, but this really scary dog had her shook up. I kissed her, told her to head upstairs to Daddy, and I would check it out and make sure it was gone. She went upstairs, and I went downstairs. The first floor had a deck out on the back, looking over the yard. I slid open the door leading outside and turned on the lights. There was an awful smell out there, like sulfur or urine, whatever it was. It was strong and stung the back of my nose. I looked down, noticing the deck was wet, but it had not rained for days. But what really got me was what I saw on the deck. Footprints. They were like a dog's, but two things stood out to me. First was the overall shape. They had the shape of a paw, but much bigger longer too. And secondly, the footprints themselves. Whatever this was, it was not walking on four legs, but on two. I wasn't sure in the dark, but the way they were spaced didn't look like a dog, like my daughter said. The prints went across the deck, down the steps. I went inside to grab a flashlight. I went inside to grab a flashlight. I wanted to check to see if it was trying to get into the garage or the garbage cans. I followed the prints to the end of the deck and down the stairs where I saw the ground was damp, following the footsteps all the way to the front of the house where they suddenly stopped. I stood there for a while, looking into the dark and listening. Soon, I heard a rumble above me. I shined my light towards the roof, which sloped down, near to the ground, and saw it there, sitting on shingles. It had this face like a German shepherd, but much bigger. 
It was dripping water. Its ears were upright and sharp, sort of like a bat's, but thinner. The eyes were shining bright yellow, like hot embers, and it was growling at me. I couldn't see clearly and thought it might be a rabid dog. I began yelling, waving my arms around to scare it, hoping that if I pretended to be bigger, that it might just run away. Then this mangy-looking creature stood up on its two hind legs. It towered over me from the roof, like three of me put together, and it was very angry, teeth bared. With my flashlight, I was able to make out its body. It had a broad, white chest, but it wasn't completely hairy. It was like it had mange, with part of its arm red, like it had been wounded. It was stripped almost entirely of hair, and the eyes with the light on them looked like they were glowing. At that moment, I was petrified. I thought it was in a nightmare. A demon from another world, staring right at me. It felt like I stood there, frozen for an eternity. Finally, I took a step back, but tripped and fell on my back. The flashlight fell to the ground and I lost all visibility I had on this thing. All I could see was a silhouette from the faint moonlight. I started shuffling backwards, trying not to make any sudden moves that might agitate it, whatever it was. Then, it jumped, maybe ten feet in the air or more, over the top of me, landing behind me and taking off running into the forest. I scrambled up quickly, ran to the front door, and hurried inside as fast as I could, locking the door behind me. I started up the stairs, noticing my daughter coming downstairs to see me. She asked if the scary dog was gone. The whole ordeal left me sweaty, trembling. I told her, yeah, it's gone. Everything's going to be okay. From that day on, I was scared there. My wife would always ask why I was on edge when we went to Big Bear. We even had fights about it. Eventually, the argument stopped when the family sold the house. But what happened there never left my mind. What I saw that day was the stuff of nightmares. The stuff you see in horror movies. It was a moment that felt so unreal, but real at the same time. People might say I had a misidentification, but you tell me. With everything I described to you, what other animal could it have possibly been? I know what I saw. I live in a ridiculously small town in Vermont, called Jay, right alongside the Canadian border. Aside from the town having very few businesses, we are entirely overshadowed by Jay State Forest and Jay Peak. We're pretty much in the middle of nowhere. It was Christmas Day, and just me and my single mom. I'm not a child anymore. A teenager, yes, but I'm not exactly jumping up and down for Christmas to come. We knew this year would be quiet, so we just lined up a few movies to watch, made two steaks for dinner. In this part of Vermont, it was not uncommon to see a moose or a deer family come through from the forest past our home. The town was quieter than usual, just due to the holiday. This brought down more raccoons and bears than usual, looking for food in the cold Vermont winter. Hearing the bashing of trash cans became part of everyday life, and this Christmas was no different. We FaceTime with my sister, who is currently living in New York City. We also spoke to an aunt in California. The day was fairly ordinary, and the food was good, but again, dinner, just like any other day. We gave each other a few gifts, but even felt that was underwhelming. I was looking forward to my mom going to sleep, so I could play video games, and not feel like I was ignoring her. The PlayStation was in the living room, which overlooked the road in the front of the house. On the opposite side of the road was where the forest is. The television sat in the corner next to the window, so it is hard to not see movement outside, even when you're sucked into a game. Around 11 p.m. at night, after Mom had been asleep for a while, I heard more trash cans banging around in front of the house. I had taken the trash out earlier 
and the dinner scraps were in there. I figured it was a raccoon, trying to get whatever was left on the bones to bring back to its family. But as I tried ignoring the noise, it just got louder, like something was digging to the bottom. Out of the corner of my eye, I noticed movement and could tell that it was not a raccoon. Probably a bear. I thought I should look so I could make sure whatever it was. Chances were good that it was just run away if I scared it, that it would not get aggressive or try to come for the house. I told my friends that I was playing with virtually, that I needed to step away because something was getting into our trash. They laughed. None of them live anywhere near as remote as us. I laughed with them because I watch animals dumpster dive all day. My laughing stopped, though, when I saw what was actually outside. Pulling aside the curtain, I could see something very human-like, bending over into the trash can. Human-like, but completely covered in fur. It was definitely not shaped like a bear. My breathing must have become heavy. One of my friends could still hear me, and began asking if I was alright. All I could say was that I needed them to hold on one more second. As if it heard me, the creature emerged from the garbage can and stared directly into the window. Its eyes were glowing, and its face was hideous. It was like a werewolf, but more man-like than dog-like. It stood on its hind legs, looked about seven feet tall from what I could see. I could not take my eyes off it. The creature wiped its mouth, or whatever, and he was tearing through in the garbage, and continued staring at me. I couldn't think, and had forgotten that I had my friends on the headset. They were trying to get my attention, but all I could do was stand there, thinking that earlier, I was seeing things, or I was going to die. I noticed that the Christmas lights from the window were still on, as well as the tree. I put my controller down, reached for the plug, not taking my eyes off this thing. He looked angry, as if me looking at him disturbed his meal. He appeared as if he would pounce if I were standing outside, closer, in arm's reach. I pulled the lights out of the wall, and it appeared to startle him. He jumped a bit, knocking over the trash can and making a loud noise. I heard my mother jump out of the bed, so she must have heard it too. Just then, he took off in the direction of the forest. My mother came downstairs, staring at me silently in shock. She must have seen it too, but didn't know if I had, and did not want to scare me. My friends, who were still on the headset, trying to get my attention, I snapped out of it, told them I had to go. We both went outside to pick up the trash and the trash can. The whole time we did not say a word to each other. I don't know how much she saw, but I know that I saw a lot. I don't even like living here anymore. I've already made plans to move down to the city and go live with my sister. It's probably better than being around here where this thing lives. Hopefully, it doesn't ever get me. Wish me luck. Just this last fall, in October of 2020, whatever it is I encountered, a dogman or werewolf or were-man, I must have really pissed it off. For starters, every year, my father and I always stick up large salt blocks for the deer around here. We get a lot, especially some pretty good four and five pointer bucks. It never fails. This last fall though, we barely saw any, and I'm not sure why. That is, until we ran into this thing. On the far back side of our land, my father has several different deer stands set up, each one pointing over to a different direction, all about a half mile apart. I'm not sure which one he was in, but I guess he got a good sight on a four-pointer, went to fire, and saw it taken down by this large, what my father described to me, as an Anubis-looking being. Anubis being like the Egyptian gods. Human, except having a very stark, sharp-featured dog head, covered in black, with incredibly large hands and claws, on the feet and hands. It scared my father so much 
that he retreated from his deer stand and came back up to the house and told me exactly what happened. Not even a couple of hours later, this thing came stalking up the tree line, watching the couple does that were at the salt block. We could see it clear as day. It looked very menacing, very aggravated. Maybe it thought we were competing for its food, or so that's what I take it as. It appeared to back away after a short time, and we left it as is. That evening, it tried coming up to the house, where my father shot at it with his 45 multiple times, and I believe he hit it right in the chest as it came running towards our house, on two legs, the same way a person would if they were running. My father, just like me, is a shoot now, ask questions later kind of guy. We're not really concerned with what it is or where it came from, but is it hostile? Is it coming to attack us or trying to take our life? That's all we really need to know before we fire a few shots at it. And while the entire situation is very scary, our lives are more important than asking questions. We shot at it, it didn't seem to do much damage, even though this thing was clearly hit with a 45. There was also no blood, which was strange. We haven't seen it since, and within a couple of days of that happening, there was no more deer, and we haven't seen any, not even does, for the rest of the season, even up until now, the beginning of March. It's extremely unusual not to even see one. We've gone looking around, and there have been no traces, not even deer sheddings. Usually, by the winter and fall, this place is packed full of dough. We even set up a few game cams right outside the salt block. Nothing. It's a little strange what's going on. We're beginning to suspect that whatever this Anubis wolf creature was has ran off or eaten all the deer in the area. Thankfully, it hasn't tried to break into our house or attack us anymore. The last time we saw it was in October when it tried to attack me and my father. Maybe we've driven it off. And maybe it's taken all the deer in the area with it. Oklahoma City, in the beginning of summer of 2020. I believe that I saw a dogman pup. This ain't scary. It's just, at the time this happened, I had never heard of dogmen. Anyway, I'm a homeless drug addict. And the reason I'm telling you this is the reason I was walking out early that day is because I had to go meet my supplier. I say 6 a.m. in the morning. And I was walking next to a large turnpike. I was about 700 yards away from my destination, where I was walking, and I could not see the cars passing by because of the way the turnpike was built. There was a drop down to the road itself. At the bottom was the roadway. Up at the top, it has a fence, and the fence is setting on top of a cement divider, and is played out like this, until you reach the off-ramp. I'm telling you this because that's where I seen the dogman pup. I was getting closer to my destination. I was looking slightly down at the turnpike and looking off to nothing as I come up to this part in the drums into the off-ramp. This big-headed puppy was pulling itself up to this hole in the fence. I'm assuming it made the hole for easy access. I say easy because if you run straight across the street, there is a strip mall with a couple of restaurants that if you go in the alley, that's where they keep the trash. And I can assure you, that's where it was heading. I mean the hole comes right out across from the opening of the alley. Now, where I seen it, I was walking and thinking, all of a sudden, I was just looking at this big-headed puppy. I mean, big-headed wolf pup. I think it's a pup, because it looked like a young dog or wolf. You know how you can tell a dog looks like a puppy or a young dog? or a dog that's getting older. It was pulling itself up to the side of the cement wall, where the fence is. Sitting there is a big hole in the fence. It was in the middle of the hole. His front two paws was up on the wall, pulling itself up. You know how when you pull yourself up on the side of a swimming pool, like it was part of the way up. And I just happened to look and see it. And I was like, oh man. I mean, 
It looks so smart. Like it's got a lot of intelligence. It didn't look mean. It looked surprised. I could tell it was thinking, oh man, now I'm spotted. We'll look for a second never blinking. Or anything as my eyes came back to where the pup was. It was now gone. That's what happened at the time. And I had never heard of dogmen. I had heard of Bigfoot. But no other kind of creature. And I just happened to be on YouTube. And I started listening to a few different channels. Where I heard a story about this creature. Then I began remembering that big headed puppy I seen that morning. And it was like dang. It looks funny with such a big head and little body. It ain't the scariest, but it's really big and not too tall. I remember it having blue eyes. Very smart looking. It was gray. Really thick looking fur with white tips all over it. I didn't see its teeth or its mouth since it was closed. Its ears were like on the top of its head, like a pit bulls when they're cut with like just a couple of curls of fur on the tip of them. I couldn't see the bottom half of it, but its front paws looked like they had long nails, like claws, that were being used like hands. And by the way, the way it was lifting its hands up on the wall and itself, it looked so surprised that it could not believe that it got caught. I believe it was going to the trash can in the alley that had the restaurant trash. As soon as it pulled itself up all the way, it just had crossed the lanes of road and be in the alley, not being that big of a risk. It had about 30 minutes of darkness left to go through the trash. Anyway, sorry if this was back and forth. I never really sat down and wrote a statement out, so I apologize. But I hope you've gotten the gist of my story. It's been a few Novembers since this happened but it's still terrifying all the same. Even typing it out still brings back really bad memories, but I feel it's an important story to share and really disproves the notion growing up that monsters don't exist because what my friend and I saw that night is something out of a Stephen King novel. Right before this happened, a very close family friend who I've been friends with for a very long time and still am close, her boyfriend of six years cheated on her and then dumped her. Not only being emotionally distraught, but she was really needing company and did not want to be alone. Since I was free for the weekend and didn't have any plans, I offered to come stay at her place for the weekend. It would keep her mind occupied and keep her spirits high. I showed up, and we had a little bit of a girls' night, watching movies, eating popcorn, and just doing anything we could to keep her mind off her ex-boyfriend. Because of her not having the greatest finances in the world, she ended up with this little podunk place, kind of on the outskirts of town. A lot of woods around, but still very pretty, on the outside. It wasn't like it was run down or anything, just very small. But it was just her living there, when her ex would occasionally visit her when they were together. So what else more could you need? Since I was staying the weekend, about 11 or maybe midnight, my phone was down to about 9 or 10% battery, and I realized, oh crap, I left my charger and closed in the car. Going out to my car to retrieve them and all my stuff, since I was staying the weekend, is right when I saw what looked to be, or appeared to be, a werewolf. I stepped out on her front porch, clicked the unlock button, and as soon as I was doing this in unison, the front porch light and my car lit up together at the same time illuminating the entire area, which, right before I clicked the button and before opening the door, was pitch black. As soon as both lights came on, I was screaming and startled by what I saw. Standing maybe six feet behind my car, approaching the house, was this really tall wolf figure. Instantly, I felt like I was in slow motion, like my brain was scrambling to try and make sense of what it was intaking visually. I was seeing, right in front of me, the most realistic werewolf costume I had ever seen in my life. But as it was moving, and I could see its muscles working under its skin, and the way it was breathing and coming towards me, this was something straight out of a movie or a Stephen King novel, which I would know. I've read a lot of his books growing up. I love him as an author. 
That's why he's the first thing I thought of when I saw this. Or, I believe the book is Silver Bullet, about werewolves. I was screaming, turned around, went back in the house, and locked the door. Now, as I'm coming back in the house, fumbling with my keys, trying to lock the door, my friend who's curious, but also now panicked, rushes to the window to see what's wrong. Then she begins screaming as she starts asking me, what is that thing out there? And sees it too. That's when she closes the blinds and we both run and dive into the kitchen, grab the largest knife she has and sit there, huddled together, crying. Within a minute, we hear this thing walk like a man would on two legs to the back door where her sliding glass door is. Luckily that had blinds on it too and it was very aggressively trying to open the door, as if it knew what handles were. So that means this was clearly a person in a costume, the most convincing one I'd ever seen, or we were dealing with a real-life monster. It was rattling the door very hard, and then maybe after 10 or 15 seconds gave up, paced around the house a couple of more times, trying to pound on the windows, not heavily, because I believe if it wanted to, this thing possessed the strength to shatter a window, but it was like trying to find a weak point into the house, trying to get in. At one point, it wiggled the door handle, the front door, very violently, as if hoping it would release. It never did. We went through a period of time where we didn't hear it at all, but still too worried to get up from the kitchen floor. We decided to stay put, still crying, still scared. The only sound being the outside, and the TV faintly going. About 12 minutes go by. I do remember this because I was looking right at the clock on the oven, which was right next to us on the floor, and perfectly visible. We heard a couple very loudly distinct pops. It sounded like something being blown up, or a large balloon popping. Two of them, actually, and then silence. We heard nothing. Eventually, my friend and I fell asleep, huddled next to each other, knives still in our hand. I was the first to wake up. I jolted my friend awake, telling her, We made it. It's morning. The light's coming out. It was about 7.45, maybe 8 a.m. at this point. It's almost winter, so the sun is kind of late on rising, especially up here in the north. My phone was now dead, and because I had an Android and she had an iPhone, I had no choice but to go and grab my charger. I was going to figure something out and could not let my friend stay here. She didn't have a car at the time and she mainly got rides back and forth. As I went out to my car, I realized something horrifying. Even though the sun was up and I was now no longer afraid to go out into the darkness, my two back tires on my Prius were completely flat. I was horrified. I walked over to check them out it looked as if somebody had slashed them, and upon looking closer, something large had bit into them, popping them. There were huge holes in both the back tires, and they were completely flat, and I had already used my spare and never replaced it about a year or two ago before this. To make a long story short, I ended up calling a tow truck. I had the guy give me his personal opinion on what happened. He told me, you either have a very aggressive bear that bit these back tires, or you ran over some spikes. Something happened. Anyway, I took my friend with me back to my place, where she stayed for the next two weeks, before returning back to her house, only for a couple of days, before going to stay with her family for a couple of months, and then permanently moving up there. She eventually went back down, but only a day or two to collect her belongings, never staying overnight. Whatever happened that night, we don't talk about it. I wish I knew more about what it was that we saw. This wooly, hairy, shaggy, wolf-looking thing. But unfortunately, I'm not a biologist. Thank you for taking the time to read my encounter. I hope it's provided at least entertainment, if anything. Even if it is at me and my friend's expense. I firmly stand by that I had my own dogman experience when I was 18 years old, a senior in high school, around my house, probably a couple of miles away, no more. My girlfriend and I would go back into the woods, 
rolling hills with white oak and fir trees sparsely populated throughout. The scenery was beautiful. In fact, me and my girlfriend would both go back there into the woods to make out. Her and I had both been bitten by the nature bug, so it's somewhere we really loved to spend our time. And because I grew up in a small town, there really wasn't a lot to do, especially to escape our parents and friends, who constantly wanted to suffocate us with their time. So when we had this dogman experience, it was an afternoon like any other. Nice and sunny, clear day, probably in the upper 70s. It was later April, or maybe early May. I was a senior, and going to be graduating in probably five or six weeks, whenever the graduation was. I think it was early June, somewhere around there. My girlfriend was a junior, with the weather being so clear and sunny and bright. I know for a fact, there is no possible chance for a mistaken identity of a bear. I've seen black bear many times around here. I've seen black bear tracks many times. I know what a black bear looks like. This was by no means a black bear, even though some friends that I've told this story to really don't buy what I saw. But anyway, my girlfriend and I are sitting there, under this old half-dead tree, just talking, probably lost in conversation, when I look up behind her and I see this tall, dark figure coming in our direction from one of the hills a ways away. I was a bit startled, because in that first couple seconds, I thought somebody else had wandered back here, and where we were, to my knowledge, nobody really comes back here for any reason. Because we're such a small town, we didn't really have homeless issues, so there wasn't any bums or anything back here, or attics. But as I finished those thoughts within a couple seconds, my brain was able to fully process a little more what I was looking at, and I realized, after no more than two seconds flat, frozen in conversation, this was not a person at all. It was far too tall, it was clearly bipedal, and having a large dog or wolf head, with two tall German Shepherd-like ears, very black in color, and kind of fuzzy, especially around the neck and head, kind of like a mane, the way a German Shepherd does, its body being much more slender, but still lean. My brain was able to process all of this within just about four seconds, when I told my girlfriend, look at that, what kind of animal is that? She turns and gasps, as this thing now drops down to all fours and is now running in our direction. I think instinctually, we just reacted. She screamed, I yelled, and we both just got up and ran, ran back towards the direction of my house. We were sitting on the hill, facing downwards, south. My house was up north, behind us, up the hill. This thing was coming from the west, heading directly towards us, or perpendicular. So going north, this thing would have had to have turned up the hill to chase us. But it didn't. When we ran up the hill, neither her or I turned around to see if it was following us, and by the time we got to the top of the hill, we lost sight of it. We were both freaked out, panting, and decided to stop and make our way back to the house once we made sure that it wasn't following us and it was clear. I have never seen any animal that walks bipedally and then so effortlessly and naturally drop down on all fours like I watched this thing do. When this thing first appeared over the hill to our west, it was probably, if I had to say, no more than a hundred feet away. So I know for a fact it definitely saw us. It was facing our direction. I'd say it walked maybe 20-30 feet, and then seamlessly dropped down to all fours, like it changed its entire structure and bone position, and then began sprinting at incredibly fast speeds. That's one of the reasons why we booked it. By the time we had gotten up the hill, it was gone, so it either dove down into the hill, where trees are more far and few in between, which would translate to less places for the scene to hide, or it ran to the thicker area of forest, which was to our left, or to our east. I'm not exactly sure where it went, and how we did not see it. So, either two things. We either hallucinated it, or it was incredibly fast and disappeared into the thick brush. Since my girlfriend and I both saw it, both gave the same description and account of what happened. I really don't think we just randomly hallucinated something like this happening. 
We did not end up telling my parents or any of my friends at first, and probably not until a few years later, once her and I would both be in college, did we actually open up about what we saw, which would have made it the early 2000s, where the whole concept of the Beast of Bray Road and Dogman in general would be a little more popularized. That's actually kind of how I found out that it was a Dogman. Her and I also never heard any sounds of it approaching, no sounds of it stepping on the ground, and even once it dropped down to all fours, there was no sounds produced by that either, by it running, thudding, or moving. It's like it was completely silent, which is incredibly eerie. Having not seen it up close, I couldn't tell you any details about its face, but going on Google or online and looking at many depictions of what people illustrate as a dogman, it's not too far off from that, except it wasn't built like a big bodybuilder or like Arnold Schwarzenegger. It was pretty slender, but still lean, more tall and lanky than anything else, with the head from far away, just like that of a black German shepherd or a wolf. And no, I did not see any eyes or any teeth. Being in the late 90s, you didn't really talk about this kind of stuff anyway, for fear of ridicule. Once my girlfriend and I graduated high school and moved into college together, we would break up and both of us moved to different parts of the country. We stayed in contact because we were still best friends, and even now to this day, we each have our own families. I live on the West Coast, and she still lives in the Midwest. We still talk about it from time to time, and how scary it was. I know for a fact they are indeed real creatures, but as far as what are they, where they came from, and what do they act like or eat, I couldn't answer any of those. When I was around 12, my dad rented out a cabin that belonged to his friend from work. It was deep in the wilderness, accessible only by a dirt road. I wasn't really excited about going, but I decided not to let in on it. I didn't want to upset my dad. Dad was an outdoorsman. From a young age, Grandpa, his dad, would take him out hunting, fishing, all that stuff. He figured he would take me along to share those same experiences. It didn't matter to Dad that I was a girl. Dad packed some essentials, but was planning on buying certain things we needed along the way. He was told there was a general store some ten miles away from the cabin. So, we would buy stuff like firewood, milk, bread, whatever else we might need. Apparently... There wasn't any electricity in the cabin, so we would have to heat it with our fireplace. Dad even packed his twenty-two Winchester rifle and a little revolver. I figured we would go hunting at some point. I'd actually never shot a gun before, but Dad said it wasn't that hard and that we could easily practice. He said the hard part was hitting something. We headed out on a Thursday and planned to be back the following week. I fell asleep for most of the ride, and when I woke up, we were at the general store. At that point, it was night. Dad bought what he had needed, and we headed off for the cabin. The dirt road leading to the cabin was pitch black, and despite the headlights, you could only make out a few feet in front of you. Dad drove really carefully, to avoid any bumps or big rocks that could easily mess up the tires. The path was way overgrown. Tree branches were sliding along the car. I tried to look out into the forest, but I couldn't make out anything. When we got to the cabin, Dad fished out a couple of flashlights. It was dark at night and freezing outside. We unloaded everything from the car and brought it in. The cabin was pretty small. There were two cots to sleep in, a wood cook stove, fireplace, cabinets with plates and tin cups, and a bench, and plenty of spiderwebs. It looked like the cabin hadn't been used in years. It totally creeped me out, but Dad loved it, said it felt more rustic. We put everything in its place, and then went to bed. Dad asked me if I wanted to bring the cots outside to get a good look at the stars. I said no. 
He chuckled. We both went to sleep. The first few days were pretty nice. We hung out, woke up early, and cooked breakfast. I hiked around the area. Dad taught me how to make a fire. He showed me how to use a compass in case I ever got lost. We even shot the guns at some of the trees. I felt pretty ready for hunting, but Dad thought I needed some more practice before we went. And we needed a license, but he didn't care about that. Dad even offered me my first beer, and I'll never forget that bitter taste, the warm feeling in my stomach. Afterward, we would drag the bench in the cabin outside, set up the empty bottles, and do some more shooting practice. Even though I wasn't excited about the first trip, I ended up loving it. Dad was usually always working, so it was the first time we actually spent time together in a very long time. At night, we would make s'mores, and Dad would tell me stories from when he was a kid. First loves, bullies, pranks, that he and his buddies would pull. After the first three days, even though I was nervous about it, I wanted to show Dad how tough I was by taking my cot outside to sleep. Dad joined me, and we would both try to see if we could see a shooting star. That once creepy forest began to become something beautiful. One night, I could not sleep, neither could my father. Despite being deep in the wild, we never really saw or heard any wildlife. Insects, yeah, but never deer or squirrels. Dad was worried about attracting bear, so he made sure our food was secure whenever we went out hiking. But we never saw anything. Since we both could not sleep, he suggested we get the flashlights and hike for a bit, tire ourselves out. Maybe that would help us get to sleep. At this point, I wasn't scared of the night, so I was up for it. Though Dad suggested we bring the rifle and the twenty-two, and just to be on the safe side, in case we ran into something less than friendly. I jumped out of the cot, eager to head out. Dad reminded me to stay close, so we don't lose one another. I put the twenty-two around the waistband of my pants. Dad joked to be careful not to shoot myself. My dad swung the strap of the rifle around his shoulder securely, flashlight in hand. I followed closely with a flashlight of my own. We decided to hike to a little creek we had found. It was only about 30 minutes away, and then returned back, figuring that the hour-round trip would be more than enough. When we got to the creek, there was a horrible smell coming from nearby. I had never smelt something so awful. It didn't take long to figure out what it was. A few feet away from us was a deer, its body mutilated, guts spilt, and its face was torn. This made my father nervous. He suspected a bear must have done this. We began to head back, my dad staying in front of me. The twenty-two felt cold against my stomach. I shined the light everywhere to see if a bear was following us. I bumped into Dad, and he had stopped. I was going to ask him why he stopped, but he shushed me. His flashlight was pointed at an animal. A bear. It had its back to us, eating a deer. It hadn't noticed us yet, focused on its meal. Dad motioned to me move slowly, and we began to move around the animal. A stick had broken underneath my foot, and the bear flung itself around. That's when I realized it wasn't a bear. Its face was like a dog's, glowing from the light. It had looked like a bear because of it was being hunched over. Now, the animal stood up on its hind legs, taller than the two of us put together. It was wild and mangy, long hair, long arms, long legs. The animal began to step toward us, snarling, angry. Dad took out the rifle, firing three shots into the air. This startled the animal. It dropped down on all fours and ducked into the brush. Dad and I ran back to the cabin, gathered as many of our things as we could, and drove back home.
right then and there. To this day, I have never seen anything like it again. As I got older, whenever Dad and I would talk about what we had seen, Dad was sure that what we saw was a bear, and that the flashlights and the shadows made it look bigger than what it actually was. Personally, I'm not convinced, and I don't think he is either. What do you think? Do you think we saw something other than a bear?